Making production grade applications just got easier with this new open source tool. Introducing Cognita. It's an open source rag framework for building modular and production ready applications. Cognita uses Langchain and Llama Index under the hood and it provides an organization to your code base. This is where each of the rag components are modular and the API is driven and easily extendable. So with Cognita, you can basically use it easily as a local setup. And at the same time, it's going to be offering you a production ready environment with a no code UI. Now with Cognita, it's going to be providing you a simple way to organize your code base so that it becomes easier to test it locally while also being easier to deploy it in a production ready environment. Now, if you see with this demo over here, you can see that with the docs Q and A feature with Cognita, you're going to be able to provide context, whether that's your CSV file or any sort of file it may be. If you are to simply upload it to this production grade app, you're going to be able to chat with it, utilizing the RAG system that has been implemented within Cognita. And you can utilize this framework to develop your own production grade application, utilizing the features that are associated with Cognita. But before we move on forward, allow me to introduce today's video sponsor, Kittle. Kittle is the next generation design platform which has infused AI into its application. You're able to experience everything you need in one web-based tool, from professional grade design templates that can be edited in seconds to AI powered design tools that could speed up your whole workflow. One amazing feature is advanced text editing where you have real time text transformations, which lets you wrap any text with just few clicks. It truly hasn't been easier before. Magic recoloring, which is allowing you to choose from different trending color palettes and instantly replacing colors from any design with a single click. And the great thing is that there's multiple ready to use templates that you can get started with right away, where you can customize thousands of professional design templates that are ready to use for personal or even commercial projects. For example, if we take a look at the dashboard where you're able to utilize the Kittle AI feature, you can generate your own logo or even images. So in this case, I can go over to the logo generator tab. I can basically put in a prompt and I can click enter and it'll take a couple seconds to generate my image. And just like that, I get a beautiful image that is generated, which is a really nice logo. And that is the true capability of Kittle, which is the ultimate design platform infused with AI. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at the personal promo code, which I will be providing below. And it's going to be giving you a 25% discount on your first month of the pro plan with Kittle. So with that thought, guys, definitely take a look at this and let's get right back into the video. Now, this is definitely a really new and cool tool that will be really resourceful for a lot of us. So I definitely recommend that you stay tuned as we showcase how you can get started with Cognita, showcasing its capabilities, its architecture, and so much more. So with that thought, guys, stay tuned and let's get straight to it. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Cognita, which is this new open source framework, and it's designed to organize RAG code bases. So it's going to offer a front end for experimental with various RAG customizations, and it's going to also simplify code organizations, where it's going to enable easy local testing as well as deployment in production environments. Now. What they've done is that they've addressed key four challenges that have been addressed by Cognita. Firstly, you have chunking and the embedding job where they're extracting out and deploying code for chunking and embedding tasks, which are potentially requiring scheduled or event triggered executions. And this is for data updates. Secondly, you have query services where you're wrapping code for generating query answers. And this is into an API server like FastAPI, for example. And it's capable of handling multiple queries simultaneously and having auto scaling with increased traffic. You have LMs and embedding models, and this is where hosting pre-trained models separately in production, accessible through an API calls rather than having it loaded within Jupyter Notebooks. And this is something that they're trying to address with Cognita's Playground, which you can actually access today. And it's something that we'll be going through like as we go further into the video. Lastly, you have the concern of vector database deployment, where moving from testing on local vector databases is going to be deploying them to a more scalable and reliable manner in production. 
And we can see that Cognita is simplifying the customization as well as the experimentation with the RAG system while also ensuring an effective deployment. It's going to feature a UI for trying out different configurations. We have the docs Q&A collections as well as data sources. You have the configuration and the ability to observe real-time results and it could be used to ind independently or you can even use it with true foundry components which is going to facilitate an easier testing of models as well as scalable systems that are being deployed and we can see that cognita will allow hosting multiple rag systems within this application a little bit easier let's take a look at some of the advantages of cognita firstly we have a central reusable repository this is for parsers, you have loaders, embedders, and retrievers, which is going to prompt reusability across all the projects that are deployed. Secondly, you have the ability for non-technical users with their easy UI. You can see that you're going to be able to interact with the system that we saw on the playground quite easily. And it's a system with this intuitive AI that is going to enable document uploads as well as Q&A using modules that have been developed by their team. You also have the ability to have fully API driven, which is going to allow for integrations with other systems. Here is a brief overview of their architecture. And basically, when they were developing Cognita, their aim was to balance customization and adaptability. This is while also maintaining a user friendliness with their UI. And they prioritized the scalability to accommodate a rapid advancement in RAG, as well as accompanying it with AI, so that it's easier to integrate other new breakthroughs and also diverse applications so we can see that with this architecture that you can see it's an open source modular production ready rag framework and it has various components and it's built on seven key components which you can see over here there's seven different modules each customizable and controllable to suit different needs you have data loaders you have parsers you have embedders re-rankers vector databases metadata stores as well as query controllers First off, we have data loaders, where it's basically retrieving loads of data from various sources like local directories, you have buckets, databases, you have true foundry artifacts, and currently it's supporting loading from local directories such as web URLs, as well as GitHub repositories. So this is a great way for you to include and infuse your data into your production grade app. Next up, you have parsers, where Cognita streamlines data processing by standardizing different types of file types into a common format. It's going to ease complex parsing text, and it's going to also divide the data into uniform chunks so that it's going to be ensuring efficient handling of the large language model and enhancing contextual relevance. And it's also going to reduce the noise from having it go through different sorts of file types. After you have split the data into smaller segments, they use this pre-trained embedding model to convert both the data as well as the question into special codes called embeddings. And this is by comparing these embeddings using code similarities as well as having it so that it has identified the most relevant data chunks for the question, which is going to aid in effective selection. After finding potential matches through the embeddings, they use this re-ranking process that's going to prioritize the best results at the top, and it's going to help select that top document for the most concise context, as well as shorter query prompts. Then you have the vector database, which is going to store and retrieve data based on vectors, which is useful for tasks such as image recognition, language understanding, as well as just basic recommendation. They efficiently handle vectors and it's going to measure similarity using models that are already built in, as well as different products that have been integrated. Then you have the metadata store, which is going to contain configurations that are defining a project or a RAG app including the collection name associated with the vector database, linked data sources, as well as parsing configuration. And lastly, it will even conclude the embedding model details. So you have two storage methods, local as well as two foundry, and they're all supported within Cognita. And lastly, you have the ability to have query controllers, which is something that will be allowed once the data is indexed and stored in the vector database. Now it's time to combine all the parts together into actually using the application. So this is where it will confine and it will queue up all these different components in their overall architecture to have this 
production grade application or this rag based app that you have developed to be functional. So let's get started and showcase the playground of Cognita. This is where we're going to be taking a look at the Docs Q&A app that was developed with it. This is a great way for you to upload your documents, chat with it, and create applications that are quite intricate with this. Now, as I mentioned before, you have the collection system that Cognita provides, where you can simply just provide external URLs, such as web URLs from GitHub repositories, or just basic websites. And you can basically create a new collection collection so that it retrieves each and every like context by scrapping the information on that website and then infusing it into this vector database. So you can even upload your own data sources by just creating a new data source. You can click on this button, upload your own files, and you can name it something so that it can provide context to the chatbot that we're going to be dealing with. You have a model configuration system over here. You have a retrieval. You have this multi-query retrieval or this vector store retrieval with similarity search. You also have retriever configurations. You have a stream, a prompt template that you can edit. So in this case, you can even choose different models the true foundry models from the Mistral categories or from the Llama 2 categories. So you have a good flexibility as to what you can use for curing, queuing up different prompts with this application. So let's test this out and create our own chatbot and test out the docs Q&A within Cognita. So what we're going to do is go over to the data sources. We're going to create a new data source. We're going to choose the web data source type. We're going to be just providing our channel URL. And once we have done that, we can just infuse it back into here and we can click submit. Once we that is done, it's going to then upload our data source, which we can then go to the collection, create a new collection, add in the embedding model to the collection that we have created. So I can then just simply give this the same collection name. Then I can find my collection, which is the world of AI feature tab with the URL from the data source that I provided. And then I can simply just click on proceed. Once it has done this, I can then head over to the docs Q&A and select the collection that I've created. And there we go. I simply loaded up the collection. I asked it a random question, what that website was. And I got this answer based out the context provided. The website appears to be owned by Google LLC. Now, obviously it's not gonna be able to retrieve anything off of this because it's just uh, different like images, thumbnails, as well as just titles of different videos. If I was to provide a Wikipedia page, it would be able to provide better context. But you, I was just trying to showcase and demonstrate how you can create the collection as well as the data source. And that's basically a gist as to what you can do with Cognita. This is just the start, guys. There's a lot more to it. You can quickly get started with it and they explain each and everything about this model on their GitHub repo. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at this because it's a great project that will be really, really useful for a lot of us. So with that thought, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some sort of value out of it. I'll leave as all the links that I use in today's video in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out the Patreon page because this is a great way for you to access different subscriptions completely for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.